The Tournament of Power is the focal point of the newest, ongoing arc of Dragon Ball Super. It's a high-concept idea featuring 80 fighters made up of 8 teams with 10 members whom are competing in a Battle Royale-style elimination match. The winning universe will be allowed to survive and receive a wish on the Super Dragon Balls. The losers, however, will have their entire universes erased from existence by the Zenos, the supreme deity of the Dragon Ball world. This was an arc that had some foreshadowing in the series and was built up to be amazing. And despite being scorned by how awful the future Trunks arc turned out, I had some hope and hype for this arc. However, as the arc has progressed, a number of Toei and Toriyama problems have started to rear their ugly heads, and really ruin aspects of this arc. So in this video, I'm going to be listing off 5 ways Dragon Ball Super is ruining the Tournament of Power. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you can see all of my content right away when it comes out. Number 5. A Lack of Focus the first up on this list is really something I've come to see watching the arc from week to week, and that is that this tournament really seems to have a lack of focus. It's becoming more and more apparent that there is no real focus being placed into this tournament on real plot threads or storylines. Most of what we see just happens, and for a random length of time even if it's something that by all means should receive more focus. Sure, there's some build-up to Goku vs. Jiren and Kale and Khalifa gaining their power, but pretty much everything else is constantly jumping back and forth depending upon the episode. Sometimes I'm left wondering where characters like Gohan, Piccolo, 17, and 18 are, as they'll suddenly show up and be featured prominently, and then all of a sudden disappear for episodes on end. And then in one episode, we'll see some of a fight that seems like it's going to continue into the next, and then it won't even be referenced. Like, what happened? It's becoming pretty clear over time that the writers and directors of this show either don't have proper oversight or simply aren't on the same page, which leads to major story, tone, and focus inconsistencies. But it also leads into the next item on this list. Number 4. The power scaling is horrendous. Now, I know a lot of people don't agree with me about power scaling, but there is becoming less and less credible in-universe explanation or rationalization for what the scaling has been as of late, which is horrible. And I just recently re-watched the entirety of Dragon Ball GT, so I know bad scaling when I see it. Yet at times, Dragon Ball Super has put GT's scaling to shame. This really started to happen around the time of the future Trunks arc, when Trunks can fight a post-god Goku, Goku can overpower a fusion who is clearly trying harder than he did against Trunks and Vegeta, and then Trunks can fight Merge Zamasu after literally seconds before Zamasu tanked the final Kamehameha and was bragging about it. But there's been episodes where the scaling makes that look competent. In episode to episode, it seems to have a totally different structure. Now Gohan, who magically got to Super Saiyan Blue level in two days, has real trouble against some fighters, and suddenly base Goku and Khalifa can take them out. One episode, Vegeta will be fighting someone as a Super Saiyan, and then suddenly he'll be fighting them in his base. Super Saiyan 2 Goku can't even put a dent in Kale in her Berserker Rage form, and she literally walks through his Kamehameha as a Super Saiyan Blue, and choke holds him. And then a matter of episodes later, Super Saiyan 2 Goku can suddenly fight a stronger, controlled Kale and Super Saiyan 2 Khalifa on his own, and then have the better of them as a Super Saiyan God? The scaling literally makes no sense and has zero consistency. I mean, they actually said in a recent episode when a tired base Goku was somehow able to fight Super Saiyan Khalifa that it was because Goku had a better understanding of martial arts. Martial arts. This is way past the days of Dragon Ball Z, which threw martial arts down the drain in favor of pure speed and power. That's how almost every single fight in Z was solved. And if you were even a couple times stronger than your opponent, your martial arts doesn't matter. 
yet suddenly in Super, it does? It's like the writers of this show never even read or saw the previous series and manga, and have no idea how multipliers, transformations, and the internal continuity of this show even works. But I'm sure someone will try to pretend it all makes sense, because suppression, holding back, stamina, blah blah blah, Goku can now magically regenerate stamina, which before he used to use sensu beans, eat loads of food, or sleep to gain it back. Now he can just do it within literal minutes of losing it all. I wonder if he'll learn super ventriloquism next. Number 3. Writing it backward. So one of the problems which I feel ties into some others on this list is that this arc at times has felt like it was written backwards. Now the opening to it, which featured the Zen Exhibition Tournament, was pretty great. We got an awesome fight for Majin Buu which gave him some shine, another awesome fight with Gohan using his mind to overcome blindness, poison, and an unsensible opponent, and then we got an alright fight with Goku where he basically overpowered his own power and you get the idea. And naturally, all this was cut out of the manga. Good going Toyotaro, you really deserve all that praise you get. But this video is about the anime, so I digress. Everything after the Zen Exhibition match has just been written the opposite way of how it should have been. We get a little over 10 episodes of Goku recruiting the Z Fighters, Gohan and Piccolo training, and Goku sparring with everyone one on one, and then we get glimpses here and there of other universes gathering their fighters. The most attention to other universes we saw was, unfortunately, with Universe 6's three Saiyan fighters, Kaba, Khalifla, and Kale. But the common theme with all of this is how incredibly rushed it all was. Gohan and Piccolo train a little bit, and suddenly Gohan can fight Goku as a Super Saiyan Blue. Roshi was just training off screen, same for Krillin, and can impress Goku and even defeat Gohan through means that would go on to not matter afterward. Everyone was just scaled up to Goku's various forms off-screen, or with little time spent on explanations or real character development. But then what do we see when we get to the Tournament of Power? Episode after episode is spent focusing on different characters, trying to throw in emotion and snippets of development here and there, and really bloating this section of the story. Instead of being front-loaded or naturally progressing everything, the writers instead elected to middle and backload literally everything to where the tournament sometimes slows down to the pace of a frozen tortoise. And really, it's just all backwards. What we really should have gotten was a whole training and gathering mini-arc for this tournament. Tournament. Actually seeing our teams meeting one another, learning their aspirations and goals if they win, and maybe seeing a problem with the stipulations. We could have seen Gohan, Piccolo, the androids, and even the humans go into the hyperbolic time chamber and train for episode after episode, figuring out team maneuvers and realistically growing their powers to levels where they make sense to be where they are, not just saying they've been training off screen. We could have learned more about Universe 6's Saiyans, and what their experience was, why they were so strong, and maybe even had Champa and Vados train them temporarily. It would have been funny seeing Champa getting out of breath, showing them how to fight, but then still showing him to be immensely powerful when he's serious. And if Whis has a staff similar to the Time Chamber, what's to say the other angels don't as well? There's so many ways that they could have played with time and made us actually care about the characters, and then when we get to the act actual fight, it should have been a real deal, movie quality collection of episodes, animated as great as Goku vs. Jiren and Goku vs. Kale and Khalifla, and it should have been super fast paced, filled with teamwork and tactics, and ended far sooner than it's been dragged out to. But instead, they did it the completely opposite way. And I know some people will say, oh, so you want filler, and that stuff is boring. But character development is not filler, and it certainly isn't boring if you actually think about it. And you know what's boring? People just punching each other with little rhyme, reason, or focus for dozens of episodes with little to no development. And for all the bashing Z gets about this, it did it far better than Super. Number 2. 
Kefla. Now, if there's two characters that absolutely bring this art to a screeching halt for me, it's Kale and Khalifla. The two of them are utterly annoying fanfiction tropes of characters whose very existence is a walking billboard for the fast forward button. And the worst part of all is that they've been given far too much screen time. If they were just annoying characters in the background, it would be one thing, but Toei or Toriyama or whoever is making these decisions is shoving them in our faces to an obnoxious degree. Great. They get episodes devoted to them which are usually the same thing over and over, with them saying the same things over and over, and them just mowing through far better and more interesting characters over and over and over again. And you know what? Just to throw the biggest middle finger Toei could at me or the audiences who just want them off the screen, they instead come up with some incredibly contrived nonsense that Toyotaro must have inserted into the story himself. About how Kale and Khalifla just so happen to have Patara earrings on them, and then are allowed to fuse together into Kefla. Now, I think a magical item which makes two people absurdly strong and can own almost anyone is a weapon, but I'd also think that Goku Ku and Jiren looked like they were flying in previous episodes, so clearly the rules have been long ignored. But just the fact that this happened is one of the dumbest things to ever happen in this show. And this is the same show that said Goku never even kissed his own wife, or knew what kissing was when Chi Chi kissed him on the cheek in Dragon Ball and they've had two children. But anyway, I did a video on how much I can't stand these two, which I recommend checking out, but Kefla is the dubious fusion multiplier times worse, and I really just want her to go away. Number 1. Dragging it out. Now, I've already touched on how elongated this tournament has felt so far, and how the pacing can really make no sense and comes to a screeching halt at times. However, the very concept of the tournament itself is being dragged out, and with no clear endgame in sight as of yet. Now, being hardcore fans of this series and following every episode in the Japanese, and the various Dragon Ball YouTubers, we know people love to speculate, even at times to ridiculous degrees. However, one thing that seems clear is that most people expect there to be some sort of twist in this tournament. Most people whom I've seen comment or talk to think the tournament will be interrupted, or at the end something big will happen, and this is certainly a possibility, but as the episodes continue to go on and on, I'm starting to just want them to get to the point already. If this is all big setup for the tournament being interrupted similar to what happened in the Boo Saga, then they just need to get there already. I don't usually use the Boo Saga as a positive example because it really has had a constant negative influence on the franchise since, but at least the Boo Saga knew when to get the tournament over with and get to the real plot of the arc. The opening to the Boo Saga, which led to the interruption of the tournament, is only 20 episodes. These 20 episodes include the reintroduction of Gohan, the Great Saiyan Man, Fidel's training, Goku coming back, and the tournament itself. Likewise, the opening to the Tournament of Power, if we assume a similar outcome, is going on 40 episodes and there's a lot less happening if we compare the tournaments. In the Boo Saga, we got a fun children's tournament with Goten and Trunks. We also saw fun antics with Mr. Satan, as well as the introduction of the Supreme Kai and Kabito, as well as the implications of something bigger going on. We saw a brutal and emotional beating of Videl by Spopovich, and eventually as Gohan was attacked and drained by Spopovich and Yamu. All of this tied into the plot and had a far clearer focus than what we've seen in the Tournament of Power thus far. And if this thing is going to be interrupted, then they've done a poor job thus far setting that up. And if the tournament itself must play out and then something big happens to continue the arc, then that means the tournament itself is just a formality. It's just a way to show cool action and fights before the arc really begins. And thus it has no true merit, nor does it matter in and of itself. Thus, if that's the case, they need to just get it over with already, because the longer we're just kept waiting, and the longer the focus is on the tournament, the more we'll feel like we've been wasting our time when the plot finally goes into motion. I doubt the arc won't use anything from this tournament to continue it, however, I wouldn't put it past them to use it all to do something minor, like the Trunks arc only happening so we can have two Zenos. But just imagine for a second that our hopes and anticipations are totally false, and that there will be no interruption. Imagine if we sit through this entire 
entire arc, it's just a tournament, and everyone was a race for real, and there's nothing deeper at play. Won't this feel like a big, elongated waste of time? Sure, it might be fun on your first or next rewatch, but it might also sink in that there's nothing to it. That this entire experience is hollow, and yet another arc, like the Tournament of Destroyers arc, where we expected there to be a big deal ending or massive plot to unfold, is just another tournament. That was meant to be cool, and that's it. Wouldn't that just feel like weak flatulence? And imagine if all the universes just get wished back like new. It would be a massive waste of time and a massive waste of potential. And if that's the case, it needs to just get it over with already. And I really want this to be great, just like I want every arc and episode of the series to be great. I want it to surpass Dragon Ball and DBZ, and to bring this franchise to new echelons of quality and greatness. But if something is going to happen, they just need to get to the point already. So this whole arc isn't totally sunk by something else on this list. Alright guys, so this has been 5 ways Dragon Ball Super is ruining the Tournament of Power. Let me know your thoughts down below, I'm sure many of you already have, but let me know anyway because I want to hear your thoughts down below. And as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe, enable those damn notifications.